the great white sturgeon. One of the oldest living fish species that date back to the Triassic period nearly 245 million years ago. These marvels of mother nature still roam the dark waters of this earth today. In the middle of winter, we wander into the home of where the world record river monster once resided. In 1898, a fish stretching nearly 22 feet long and weighing 1,500 pounds was pulled from the icy waters of this deep gorge. Today, five friends brave the elements to see what remains in the depths of hell. Day two commences. We're sitting here cleaning glasses. Josh is over here farming fish already. Getting Bobber Downs. Started early, you know. Bobber Downs. Floats. It's gonna be an awesome day again. Absolutely just dead calm down here. And uh, about as stoic as it could possibly be. So we're gonna start the morning going after some steelhead. We found a little honey hole last night, so we're hoping if you guys didn't see that right at the end of yesterday's episode or last week's episode, go back and check it out. We got an awesome bite. I'm not gonna tell you too much about it because you gotta go see it. So this morning we're gonna go after some steelhead. We're gonna catch trout along the way and then we're gonna try to set some records. We're gonna go after the big boys. Nine foot, ten's the record. We need a 10 foot fish to beat it. I got a funny feeling in my elbow. Yeah. But maybe it's where I hit it on that rock yesterday. That's probably but. more what it is. <laughs> but it's gonna be an awesome day, you guys. If you haven't already, drop us a comment below with what you thought of this series so far. I've had a blast out here with Hell's Canyon Adventures and, and with Josh Butters fishing uh, the earlier episodes on this series. So watch them if you haven't. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a great day. So the next morning began and we hit the river and we'd seen so many steelhead at the end of that second day that we really kind of wanted to focus on catching a few steelhead up towards that upper echelon of the river right when we started that morning because we figured there was quite a few fish around because these are wintering fish. They're coming up to these areas, they're not leaving and they're staying there the whole time. So our goal right away that next morning was to try to get a few steelhead under our belt before we headed out to try to find a real giant. True on. on. It was like a nice truth. He feels a little cold. Might actually be a steelhead. Small one. No. The one of these steel. Couple more years. So switched to something a little different this morning, everybody. Going with the little micro Mad River worm. Beautiful little first fish of the day. But switched over since we were getting them so good on the jigs yesterday. I switched my setup, and we didn't even show you that setup yesterday really, but we're using six to 12 pound steelhead rods. Um, you can use this on an ultralight, any kind of setup that you want if you're fishing less water, but we need a lot of weight with these big half ounce bobbers and stuff to get down, and even in the strike zone with how big the water is. But I got about a five and a half foot leader down to my little mini jig. It's just a Mad River worm with a mini jig head, must add. I do a little bit jankier setup here, but it's cheap and easy. I just do a swivel, clamp on about four or five number seven split shot. Got my half, half ounce bobber, my bobber stop, and some floating line. And we're basically just steelhead fishing and catching these trout kind of on the way. Um, and hoping every time that the bobber goes down, it might be a big steely. So let's get it back in there. Trout. The heavy trout. Not the steelhead. Another little guy. No, it's trout. It's something, that's for sure. Check that out, guys. It's just a beauty. Got him. 
Oh, you got something connected to him there, bud. Yeah. You got him a yarny. You got a yarny stuck to him, bud. We got another rig in him. He took the old classic double corky. I don't know if you'd consider this a steelhead or not. I'd say it's probably a rainbow. Yeah. Another trout. So just kind of like the day before, as we went up to some of these really good steelhead runs, it was just trout, 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 trout. Then we finally hook into a steelhead. All of a sudden, what do you know? Of course, Josh rears back and he's all bent up on a really nice chrome, nice little summer steelhead. Nice fish, Josh. Okay, here he comes. Nice, nice. Handling it. Just like that. Nice. What a great bobber down that was. This is just the coolest flipping experience that I've had in so long, you guys. Just out in some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen. Catching as many fish as we wanted to all day long. From trout to sturgeon to steelies to salmon, bass, carp, catfish. I mean, this place just has it all. Just the coolest fishing hole ever, man. Unreal. Look at this bad boy. Just another awesome fish. be a good day. I don't know if you guys can tell already, but we're already having more fun than the law allows. But this guy here, looks like a hatchery one. The goal is we're gonna catch this little hatchery trout. We're gonna break this one off. That's a hatchery. And we're gonna take this bad boy. It's the cycle of life challenge. We're gonna take this little guy and we're gonna use him as sturgeon bait. So here, we are allowed to keep six of these a day. And as long as it's not alive, you can use them to actually try to go catch your sturgeon. So we're gonna take this little dude, this little mini jig eating dude. We're gonna bonk his poor soul. And then we're gonna go catch us a giant sturgeon on it. So we get a nice little hatchery fish, bonk that thing on the head, get it in the boat, cut its gills. And then we started to think, well, you guys, it's about nine o'clock. The day's the sun's starting to come up and we're gonna start ending up running out of time because it's getting dark so, so early this time of year down there in that big canyon like that. So we thought, all right, it's time. Now we need to go find ourselves a sturgeon. So on this day in particular, a lot of the better fishing spots for sturgeon are further down in the river system. So the idea was that we were gonna go as far down as we could to start and start working our way back up, which meant we had to end up going through all of the very biggest rapids that that canyon had to offer. 
All right, so this is our second class four wrap. This one's called Granite. A little trickier, right? Yeah, a little bit more of a drop. A little one. bigger. You guys can see, you can't even see the horizon line. Just goes, 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 then nothing. Look at this hole. It's all right though. Good thing I brought extra pants. There it was. This poor little guy was swimming around, eating bugs about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. Made our way back down river, down to the sturgeon spot. Apparently there's a giant that lives here, so we're not leaving until we see him. We're gonna drop this bad boy in. Go ahead and drop. So I dropped it down, I'm guessing it's about 50 feet or so. We're gonna cruise back up into the eddy, drop the other one. Then we're gonna go to the bank, reel these things tight, and let them soak out here until. So. Say it's about 40, 50 feet deep. Kind of felt like a semi rocky, sandy bottom. Looks like, the, you know, this, what happens again with just kind of like the trout, like we've talked earlier, these fish will be staged and sitting in these deep pools again where there's a lot of food coming to them. Where yeah. they can just sit there for days and weeks and just go back and forth on these flats and dig up, you know, any sort of clams or dead fish floating down or, or whatever it might be. So we're gonna sit and wait. I'm gonna probably fire up the barbecue here in a little bit and see if we can't get us a giant. I think it's gonna happen. Big fish. Big the fish. sun's out. Sun's guns out, out, guns out. Yeah, <laughs> surging out. Surging out. Oh God. Sniffing it, rolling it, sniffing it. Oh, he's munching it, dude. He's munching it. Oh, ho, ho. One for Rooney sticks, dude. Wait, 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 wait. Pick it up, Pick it up and just kind of hang on to it. It's getting heavy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, that's not me doing it. I'm just like letting them take that rod tip down. Reel down on him and give him a little up pressure and see if, see if he's there and just kind of starts. How did that not stick? Damn it, man. It just got it, it got the corner of his lip. <laughs> so we were just sitting down to film a tutorial. We came to a new spot, came down river. Josh is up river trying to get some trout and steelhead. Cody went up to use the restroom at their their uh, their little family owned cabin up here. And we're sitting over here dinking with stuff and this rod just about got yanked out of the holder. But obviously didn't stick. We got circle hooks on these two. And then we got a normal hook on this one, a big river hook. So circle hooks should do it by themselves. So something just didn't stick there. Man, that was a, I just threw my rod. <laughs> so the day of fishing was really tough. You know, as we all know, if anybody out there, especially if you live on the West Coast and you've gotten to go sturgeon fishing, it's a it's a style of fishing and it's a fishery that is has you know produces a lot of action. You're catching fish normally all day, or you're at least getting bit. We are getting action in every single spot, but it's a kind of a style of fishing where it's a sit and wait game, but it's supposed to be quite a wait as we started working our way back up through the river.
Now going through these rapids in this jet boat was something that I definitely won't ever forget. You know, especially because once I started getting a little, a little more comfortable with it, I started going out and hanging out on the back deck so I could see that full view of the front of the boat and everything and how he was actually running these lines in these rapids. Because it's one thing to be a good boater and be able to go down and pick out a safe line to go down rapids like this, but it's a whole nother world trying to go up and pick your lines and, and ride out the currents. And you can see in a lot of these videos how he goes up through and he starts surfing these waves all the way across. And just the feeling of that big boat going across that big white water like that and being able to stand back and watch it all and soak it all in was something that's almost hard to describe. And you really have to just be there to kind of take in and understand how powerful and how cool this whole situation really is. Dusty, don't tie up. Dusty, I'm getting yeah. hit right now. Oh, we got bigger than the other one. Is that some of it? Back and forth and hitting it and swimming away. I'll move it just a couple inches and he'll grab it again. He's carrying it around, dude. Look at my line. Put some uh, wheel down and put some pressure on it and see what happens. Hmm. No, we got a fish. We got a fish. Fish on, you guys. Fish on, boys. So this thing's been carrying this around. We've been getting messed with. I'm pretty sure I that this. Him. I think it might have from the beginning. I think really we did. He came off. What's going on here? No, he came off. That was the weirdest thing ever. He was really heavy though. God dang it. Look where the hook is. That's what's going on. See that? He had it the whole time. He had it the never whole time hooked. and he never got hooked. That's that was just it in his throat. Yep. So, what I do in this situation is. Dang it! Through, get that thing way over here. I like. I actually do like to hang the hooks like that because when they when they pick it up and they toss it in their mouth, they don't feel anything unnatural, and their brain just goes suck it in, and that thing gets dragged in behind every time. Oh. So these guys like to use circle hooks down here where they were fishing and it's not something that we use all the time when we sturgeon fish where we do, but it's a great method so that these fish don't come off. And the circle hook is a hook that goes around almost and its point comes back in towards itself so that when these fish grab, that hook rolls into their mouth and it stays hooked the entire time. So as the day went on, we kept getting these epic bites. And he's got to remember that hook was four or five inches away. So he's got to yep. do it in, eat that thing. To... I'm just going to hold it until it's Coming away, we just got bit over here. And you could definitely tell there was a big fish on the end. I mean, uh, there was one of the times where Josh was getting bit and I could actually hear through the butt of his rod, the fish hitting it. So like, you could hear it thump, 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 thump. And the goal was to not set the hook. We're about to double, we're about to double. Give it a good little set. You feel it? No. Okay, drop it. It's not big enough. Shake your bill. That's amazing. You guys took us to the nursery? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Usually the big Feels like holes. about three footer. There you go. Oh, that thing in. There it is. Okay. Game off. That's what it is. We kept having heartbreakers throughout that day. A couple of them almost ripped the rod right out of the rod holder. Uh, a lot of the fish would bite, bite, bite. We'd go to wait to set the hook. They'd swim away and leave the bait. And we were really, really winding the clock down to the very last minute. Well, we're gonna need to run up here. We can fish one more hole, but we better do it up by, by the lawn. 
So Dusty comes out out of the cab and tells Cody, hey guys, you know, we have some of the biggest rapids. We have three of the biggest rapids on the river still to run. We need to get out of here. It's, it's time. Like we can't, we can't wait any longer. And the words no sooner come out of his mouth and then magic strikes. You, can you get, oh, oh, you got it? Got him. he's on. <laughs> that's how I know it's, that's how I know it's on because the dog's barking. <laughs> Oh man, you guys, we were just talking about leaving. He's saying he doesn't know if we have enough time or daylight to make this happen. And almost gets yanked out. Good thing I'm paying attention. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. God, dude. All right, here we go. Oh man, it really doesn't get any better. Oh my God. So the whole time I'm fighting this fish, all I can think about is we're running out of daylight. We're running out of daylight. And I'm fighting, as you guys will see, this giant, I mean, it's a couple hundred pound fish and it's just me and him going back and forth and tangoing. And I, we're using, I think, 200 pound braided line. So I have both my thumbs on this reel, trying not to have it pull me in the river. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, I have not even, how deep is this hole? Uh uh. Uh uh. Well, that's good, they run that way. Uh -uh. I'm out, running up over. Except these two wires. Yeah, yeah. How do I turn my thumb in? Yeah, just put a little bit of thumb pressure on. Get him to stop. There we go. Come on. There you go. There you go. Now you'll be able to reel down and turn the cutter. So, what I'm trying to do here, you guys, is every time he's making that run, it's because he's getting his head turned towards the bottom. And every time I get his head turned towards the surface, I can get him to come this way. For a fish this long, it takes a lot of energy for him to turn that whole body and go back. So as long as I keep him turning this way, I can actually get him coming towards us the whole time. This is what we were looking for, boys. Last minute, kind of how this whole trip went, man. Yeah. <laughs> Saved by the bell every day. He's got a couple more runs in it. Yeah. Uh, wow. She's just getting woken up, realizing what's going on. I haven't probably got it past what, 40 feet? Uh, she said no. She said no, no. That's about a four and a half foot head shake. You see that? Every time that thing turns its head, we got a time crunch here, it's gonna get dark on us. Yeah, we, we still got rapids to run. I'm not trying to push and put any pressure on you, but yeah, about 20 minutes. And I'm trying to get this thing up as the sun is setting and we're losing daylight, which is putting us all in kind of a scary situation where we can't be running these rapids at dark. If we don't get out of here soon enough, we're gonna get stuck down in this canyon for the night. What if we break the record, boys? <laughs> Very well could be. Oh, uh, dude, I've caught a lot of big ones in my time and this is a really big sturgeon guys what is this what is this that's a solid eight looks like oh baby oh that was a big one that was a big Look at this, look at this behemoth. This dinosaur, code man's in the water with him. Just a stud. Look at that. Wow, you guys, look at that. Roll her on over for us yep. one more time to the side. Just look at the girth and the mass. Look at that fish, guys. Eee! Cody was swimming with that fish and as I got to grab that thing, by the tail and hold it by the mouth for just a minute. Being able to share that moment with everybody there and this incredible creature that has been living in this river for probably a, close to six, 700 years, it really brought to light the, the beauty and the serenity of the place that we were really in at that moment. It's cold. Oh, epic, man. We did it, everybody. We did it, boys. What a trip. So, uh, with December, December what? Who cares? It's, it's winter. It's... <laughs> Boy, dude, <laughs> thank you, brother. 
Love you guys. It's Viking blood, man. It keeps, me, it keeps me warm. Oh, God, it's on the fish. What a way to end it. What a blessing. Thank you to the, to the creator, yeah. to the fish, to the sturgeon, no. trout. Thanks for coming Good out, job, man. Good job, boys. It's been so incredible. Awesome Brother, time we with did you guys. it. Woo! Day three, that, you, we couldn't have ended the three day trip better than that right we there. We were out of here. Yeah, we were out of like, here. We were like uh, five more minutes because <laughs> we got a, we got a ways to go up river still. Oh, well, my arms are still shaking. Let's get you warmed up. Let's get back to the lodge. So landing that fish really kind of brought this whole trip into a close. What a beautiful setting to do it in with some of the great friends that I'm gonna have for the rest of my life now that I was, you know, granted and lucky enough to meet while I was down there in that area. And, and once again, like I mentioned in the last video, and if you guys didn't see the last video, go check it out because it was just as epic as this one. But like I mentioned in the last video, it was such a cool experience to be down here in these guys' home, uh, that they were so willing and, and ready to share with me and, and Sean, our camera guy, and take us by the hand and take us into one of the most beautiful canyons in the world, in North America especially. So as this video series comes to an end, you guys, and if again, you have not seen all the videos from the series, we had an amazing time fishing with Josh Butters, with Cody Arndt and Dusty Yates out there in, in Idaho. And if you guys ever, ever, ever have any inclination of going and seeing some new country and want to see some of the most beautiful country that we have to offer in the United States, do not hesitate to give these guys a call. It's an experience that I would recommend to anybody anywhere in the world. And alongside that, we want to give a huge thanks as all of us anglers from out west here to all the people and all the men and women that work for the Idaho Fishing Game and all the tribal fisheries that they have all the way up and down the Columbia River and all over this great state of Idaho that we got to spend time in. If it wasn't for you guys and it wasn't for the efforts that all of you have, we wouldn't have fish in these areas and we wouldn't have any opportunity from Idaho all the way through the Columbia River to Astoria on amazing fish like we got to catch in these episodes. So huge thank you to you guys out there. Keep up the good work. And we're so thankful we got to come experience some of the beauty and some of the bounty that that incredible place has to offer.